Hello, we were discussing the reciprocal lattice and the reciprocal lattice vectors. In that context, let us now discuss a new construction called the Brillouin zone. So, Brillouin gave the statement that the diffraction condition, uh, the way he casted it in his statement, that is the most widely used in the solid state physics. A Brillouin zone is like a Wigner-Sitz primitive cell in the reciprocal lattice. So, what is in Wigner-Sitz cell? It's uh, dividing the connection between two lattice points into half and constructing a primitive cell that way. So, the Brillouin zone provides a nice geometry, a nice geometrical interpretation of the diffraction condition. So, we have the diffraction condition that k dot g equals g squared. Now, what the Brillouin description does is k dot half g is half g squared. This is the kind of description that it provides. So, how do we construct a Brillouin zone? We consider a simple example of a square lattice and try to construct few Brillouin zones in that. Let's put the lattice points first. I'm drawing few lattice points for the reciprocal lattice. So, these points are reciprocal lattice points and the corresponding real lattice points could be different. So, I have drawn a 5 by 5 square lattice we will imagine its extension in three dimension for our purpose now let us consider the atom at the center sorry the site at the center not the atom and we will consider the nearest connecting the shortest connecting vectors and we will half them using a plane so if we consider from this one, the nearest lattice site is here, here, here and here. So, if we half this vector using a plane, that plane will go like this. If we half this vector, that will look like this. If we half this vector, it will look, the plane halving it would look like this and the plane halving this one is this. So, what we got looking like a square in three dimension, it would look like a cube is the first Brillouin zone. Let's, cul let's shade it with yellow. So, yellow is the first Brillouin zone. Now, if we consider the next nearest neighbors, let's take another color. So, the next nearest neighbor for this side would be this side here and we will half that vector using a plane like this. This is another nearest neighbor, neighboring site. We will half this with a plane like this. 
another uh, g vector for the nearest lattice site would be this one we would half that vector with a plane like this and another is here we will half that with a plane like this so now we have the second brillouin zone that is shaded green like this this is the second brillouin zone let's consider even further nearest neighbors so if we go even further then for this lattice site we will have a nearest neighbor here now we take the red color and we consider a plane halving this vector this uh, reciprocal lattice vector that would go through this this reciprocal lattice vector if we half it it will go through this sorry not this it will go through this actually if we take this lattice vector and half it with a plane that plane will be this one if we take this lattice vector half it that will be this one so the third brillouin zone here is this region this region this region this region this is the third brillouin zone and the area or in three dimension the volume of each brillouin zone is exactly the same you can show this now after you can extend it to fourth fifth and so on brillouin zones but the first brillouin zone is the most important one the physics that the brillouin zone captures everything is captured within the first brillouin zone and the subsequent brillouin zones are just translation of that physics nothing new physics is captured in the subsequent brillouin zones so this construction of brillouin zone is very important for this course we will also use this outside the concept of crystallography when we discuss the electronic states the bands we will also make use of this concept of brillouin zone brillouin zone is very important in that case so it's important to understand the brillouin zone very uh, well therefore we will invest some more time on this we will see the reciprocal lattice for some simple examples and we will try to construct the brillouin zone for that in the next part of the our discussion so we consider a simple cubic lattice The primitive translation vectors of a simple cubic lattice that's very simple the vectors are given as a1 equals a that is the lattice constant along x direction a2 is given as a y cap and a3 is given as a z cap the volume of the cell you can find using scalar triple product a1 dot a2 cross a3 this scalar triple product you can trivially see will give you a cubed that is the volume of this uh, cell using with uh, a being the lattice constant 
Now, if we try to find the primitive translation vectors of the reciprocal lattice, then we have to make use of the definition of the axis vectors for reciprocal lattice. We have the definition like B1 equals twice pi A2 cross A3 over A1 dot A2 cross A3 that is the denominator is just the cell volume and the numerator is this and so on we have uh, b2 and b3 defined in very similar fashion just uh, for b1 we don't have a1 here for b2 we won't have a2 here and for b3 we won't have a3 here that's all so we can uh, after working out this prescription we can write that b1 for simple cubic lattice becomes twice pi over a along the x cap direction b2 can be worked out to twice pi over a y cap direction b3 can be worked out to twice pi over a along the z cap direction so these are our reciprocal axis vectors the primitive translation vectors here the reciprocal lattice itself is a simple cubic lattice you can clearly see because of course the lattice constant of the reciprocal lattice instead of a becomes twice pi over a but it's uh, along the cartesian direction the axis vectors are along the cartesian direction so you can clearly see that with these axis vectors you will get just a cube nothing else so the boundaries of the first Brillouin zone can be obtained by taking normals to the reciprocal lattice vectors. So if we consider plus minus B1 plus minus B2 and plus minus B3, if we consider these six vectors, half them uh, by norm normal intersection using a plane, so there would be six planes and that will cut out a cube and that cube would be the Brillouin zone for this system. So the Brillouin zone for a simple cubic lattice is also a cube. We can clearly see that. So what would be the volume of the reciprocal unit cells, uh, the primitive unit cell in reciprocal? So the unit cell that we can form using these vectors b1, b2 and b3 that is a primitive unit cell in the reciprocal lattice. Also the Brillouin zone is a primitive unit cell in the reciprocal lattice. So these are just two different kind of description of the un uh, primitive unit cell. The Brillouin zone is like the Wigner's cell and uh, this primitive lattice vectors this is like the usual cell that we have in the real space it's al analogous to those and you can find out the volume of the reciprocal cell that would be twice pi over a cubed 